Uh, we have been uh, going over some of the announcements as part of our budget. We'll do the full budget next week, and uh, I think people will be really pleased with uh, our fiscal outlook. But we were able to uh, talk about some of the things we're doing, huge investments in education. We're doing a lot uh, with uh, environmental quality and water resources. And there'll be other segments that I think are very, very important. Uh, one of the things we're most proud of is in this budget that we'll be unveiling is what we're going to do to support the men and women of law enforcement. And as most of you remember, you go back last year, the summer of 2020, uh, you had huge movements in different parts of, of the country, municipalities, even state levels, uh, to attack law enforcement, to defund law enforcement. And many municipalities did take a huge chunk out of their law enforcement budgets, and now they're racing to try to figure out how to get it back in because crime has skyrocketed. And it's truly been one of the most disastrous policies that anyone's ever tried to implement, this whole defund law enforcement. And you see the effects of this every single day in jurisdictions that indulge with poor quality, with, with poor policies when they're soft on crime. You look at people getting let out without bail now. You just let them right out in different states and different parts of the country. That has catastrophic consequences for public safety. And so, you know, I'm proud to say even when that was kind of the, the cause du jour of the media in Florida, we never budged an inch here. Uh, we stood with law enforcement the entire time. Uh, last summer, we made clear we had their back. We wanted to make sure our communities were kept safe. And we wanted to show our appreciation that as other jurisdictions were defunding law enforcement or taking money away, that we would fund and then some. And so the budget that I signed for this current fiscal year included $1,000 bonuses for every sworn law enforcement officer, first responder, and EMT who've been working so hard throughout the pandemic in the entire state of Florida. And so we're really happy to do that. And most people that have come up to me or written into our office, it's nice to get money. Obviously, it's not like you're, you're getting super wealthy doing public service. Uh, but more than just the money was just the thought, because it showed that the state of Florida supported the people who were wearing the uniform. And that really meant an awful lot for folks. So we were proud to be cutting against the grain, uh, standing for, for truth the whole time, and, uh, and delivering some, I think, much needed uh, bonuses. And so we're here today to talk about, well, how do we build off this success in this coming year's budget? And I'm proud to say that in the budget that, that we'll be unveiling uh, next week, our law enforcement portion of that budget, uh, we will be able to re-up the $1,000 bonuses for all sworn law enforcement, all fire rescue, and all EMTs for the second year in a row. So that's really meaningful, and we're proud that we're able to do that. Uh, but we also are going to do much more than that. Uh, for the upcoming session in our budget, uh, we're going to have some long-term support, uh, particularly for state law enforcement agencies, and we are going to be putting our money where our mouth is. So we're going to be recommending to the legislature $73 million to increase the minimum pay for entry-level sworn state law enforcement officers by 20 percent to help our state law enforcement agencies recruit more law enforcement officers. Additionally, and maybe most importantly for the folks we have here, my proposal also includes an increase in pay of 25% for all other state sworn law enforcement uh, personnel to help our state law enforcement agencies retain the folks we already have and also to reward them for hard work serving and protecting Floridians. So that is going to be huge. You're talking about highway patrol, you're talking about fish and wildlife, FDLE, all these folks that have been working to see a 25 percent increase. Uh, that's meaningful, and I think that shows our commitment. We're also proposing $124 million to increase salaries for correctional officers at our state prisons. So that will bring the base salary up to $20 an hour, and these increases will help the agency hire and retain officers so they can continue to keep Floridians safe and prisoners secure. Um, we've already made progress on this, on this front, as many of you know, with the Legislative Budget Committee, and this proposal builds uh, off those discussions at the end of the day. Um, you know, we need to retain people, we need to attract people, and, and the compensation is a big part of that. We're also going to put more than $11 million for the Department of Juvenile Justice to bring the minimum pay for juvenile detention officers to 17 per hour and 19 per hour for juvenile probation officers. And finally, 
In addition, to, in addition to standing up for those who keep us safe from crime, I'm also recommending more than $1 million for our state's special risk firefighters to increase their salaries by up to $2,500 a person. Now, increasing salaries for state law enforcement by 20 and 25 percent, respectively, is going to make a real difference uh, for those officers and make a real difference for their families. It will help retain a lot of the talented people we have, as well as recruit new people into our highway patrol, into Fish and Wildlife, and into FDLE. And this announcement uh, is in addition to what we'll also have in the budget, which I did announce earlier, uh, are our incentives to recruit new people into law enforcement, whether that's from out of state transferring in. There's a huge demand for a lot of the folks in law enforcement to come to Florida, given how they've been treated in a lot of these places around the country. Places